Good morning. Good morning. Welcome all St. Andrews. Welcome to church today. And uh, welcome to those worshiping online with us today. It's a joy to have you with us for worship. And we begin our worship today. Holy Father, great creator, as we come before God's altar here uh, in this holy place, let us stand and sing together. Holy Father, great creator, please stand and sing. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We remember what the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. We should love the Lord our God with all our hearts. We should love our neighbors as ourselves. These two commandments explain the way God wants us to live. At the Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, 
not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, as we live among those things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated now for the lessons. First lesson to be read is the Thessalonians lesson, found on page 5 in your service bulletin. A lesson from Thessalonians. A reading from Paul's, le first, Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians and God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, as is right, because your faith is growing abundantly and the love of every one of you for one another is increasing. Therefore, we ourselves boast about you in the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith in all your persecutions and in the afflictions that you are enduring. This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are also suffering, since indeed God considers it, considers it just to repay with affliction those who afflict you and to grant relief to you who are afflicted as well <clears throat> excuse me, as to us, when the Lord Jesus is revealed from the heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who don't, do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. They will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might when he comes on that day to be glorified in his saints and to be marveled at among all who have believed, because our testimony to you was believed. To this end, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power, so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you, and you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Our Spark lesson this morning is this wonderful story about Zacchaeus. Page 400 in your Spark Bible. Please turn to page 400 in the Spark Bible. The story of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus. Many people lived in a town called Jericho. One of them was a rich man named Zacchaeus. He had a big house, big yard, and lots of money. Zacchaeus was, a ri was rich because of his job. He collected taxes from the people for the, Ro for the Roman leaders. However, Zacchaeus always took extra money from the people and kept it for himself. People did not like Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus saw a crowd of people gathering all along the side of the road and heard someone say, Jesus is coming. Jesus, thought Zacchaeus. Who is Jesus? He must be important. I want to see him too. Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus, but he had, he had a problem. Zacchaeus was short, too short to see Jesus from the back of the crowd. crowd. He needed to get in front of the taller people, but he knew they didn't like them. They'll never let me in front, he thought. Then Zacchaeus had an idea. He found a tree next to the road where Jesus would walk. The tree was just the right size for Zacchaeus. So Zacchaeus climbed the tree. Now he could see everything. How could the road, he, he could see the road. He could see the crowd and he could even see Jesus. Zacchaeus got excited. Step, step, step. Jesus came closer and closer until he was right under Zacchaeus' tree. Suddenly Jesus stopped. He looked up and saw Zacchaeus sitting in the, in the tree. Uh-oh. Was Zacchaeus in trouble? Maybe Jesus didn't like Zacchaeus either. Jesus started to talk to Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus came down from that tree. I want to have dinner. Come down from that tree. I want to have dinner at your house today. What, thought Zacchaeus? Jesus wants to come to my house? 
Quickly, Zacchaeus climbed down a tree. This way, said Zacchaeus, this is the way to my house. The crowd grumbled, they were upset. Someone yelled, how could Jesus go to Zacchaeus' house? Zacchaeus is a bad man, yelled another, but Jesus didn't hate Zacchaeus. He went to Zacchaeus' house while they were eating dinner. Jesus told to Zacchaeus, God wants everyone to be part of God's family and to care for others. Zacchaeus listened closely. Zacchaeus cared for Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus couldn't care for others. He knew just what to do. Zacchaeus told Jesus, I will give back all the extra money I took from the people. I'll even give back more than I took. Jesus met Jesus. Zacchaeus met Jesus and changed forever. He cared about the others. The Lord of the Lord. The Word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. And he was seeking to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd he could not, because he was small in stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all grumbled. He's gone into the guest of a man who was a sinner. Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he is also a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good morning. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, now by the grace of your Holy Spirit, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, Lord, our strength our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. I want to ask for a volunteer this morning. Someone who uh, has not been up here before. Come on up here. Can I get one volunteer to come up here? Somebody. Come on up. How about it, Tyler? Would you come up here? Come on up, Tyler. All right, Tyler. You know, I came up into this pulpit for the first time uh, in August of 2006, I'd just been called as the rector, and um, come on up, buddy. How you doing this morning? All right, you ever been up here before? 
Um, I came up here in this pulpit. I had gathered with a vestry down here, and, um, and Bob Fogel was the senior warden. He said, why don't you climb up in the pulpit? And so I climbed all the way up here, eight steps up into this pulpit, and I, I looked around, I looked down at the vestry, and he said, um, be careful of the trap door. <laughs> I looked down too. I looked down, and uh, you see a trap door? No, I don't see. Yeah. So uh, I want to ask you a question up here. Uh, what can you see that you can't when you're sitting there with Richard? What What can you see up here? Look out there. What, tell me what you can see up here. Can you, see you can see all the people from up here. What else can you see that maybe you hadn't noticed before? It's a different view, isn't it? What's that? A bunch of stuff back there. <laughs> yep, the altar's back there, right? And what else can you see? Just anything. Yeah, so the X on the wall back there. You can just see everything, right? Thanks, buddy. How about it for Tyler? Good job. Tyler came up this morning and he got a different perspective up here. Our story today, our gospel lesson, who is uh, the gospel lesson about other than Jesus, of course? Who's the, who's the gospel lesson about? Y'all help me out. It's about Zacchaeus. It's about Zacchaeus. Now the name Zacchaeus actually in Hebrew means pure. Now think about that for a minute. This guy is not just a tax collector. What was he? He was a chief tax collector. Well, what does that mean? It's not just that he had a little sheriff badge on. This guy was loaded. The tax collectors skimmed money off the people. The chief tax collector skimmed off the skim. He got to a point who the tax collectors were. This guy was really wealthy. How many friends do you think he had? The tax collectors. That's about it, right? Not a very popular guy. And here comes Jesus. And for whatever reason, you know, in your Spark lesson, I, I love the Spark illustration this morning. The Spark story is page 400. It's a great way to follow along with the message I want to, to, for us to think about today and what I got out of this lesson. Because for whatever the motivation, Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus. You know the uh, Vacation Bible School uh, song about Zacchaeus? How many of y'all have, have sent, sung that? Yeah, Zacchaeus was a wee little man, a wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. As the Savior passed that way, he looked up in that tree. Zacchaeus, you come down from there, for I'm going to your house today. You know that song? I'm going to your house today. And Zacchaeus was changed. He climbed up into the tree, and he saw things a little differently. Now, from my perspective up here, I can see every face in this room. Every face in this incredibly historic, beautiful church building, you can see them from up here. Now, it wasn't all that, always that way. And I'm going to come down from this tree, and I want to point your attention over here to where Andy's sitting, and the door is open right there. Uh, because in this side door, um, and Mike, if you can maybe train the camera over this way, I want to point um, over here. Because in way back in, can you see the date there, Andy? In the middle there, 18, 1855. In 1855, John Grimke Drayton, whose memorial tablet's over there, you see the diagram there, right there. He had these pews cut down. Because when he was up in that pulpit, these pews were a lot higher. And he couldn't see everybody. And he didn't like them napping either. So he cut the, cut the pews down. After I came uh, to Old St. Andrews 
And I saw this diagram. And Howard Williams showed me this diagram, and he says, now check out the date there. And I said, 1855. Why do you think he did that? Because he wanted to be able to see everybody. And he wanted them to see him up in that pulpit. And he says, now, tell me the date again, 1855. He said, when did John Grimke Great become the rector here? 1851. And Howard said, how many years did John Grimke Great wait before he made any changes to this church? Four. There's a lesson there. And it's about perspective. We all need, sometimes, a different perspective. I was at a, uh, with a group of friends last night for dinner, and we, talk about, we talked about perspectives in this country today and how brutal people can be to one another when they share or don't share the same perspective when they have a different perspective and how the rhetoric in this country and the respect for each other has denigrated so much because we don't see like the other person sees, and we have to demonize them. We don't know what was going on in Zacchaeus' heart. We know what he did, and it wasn't so good. But he wanted to see Jesus, and he wanted to know what this guy Jesus was about, and he wanted to have a different perspective. On Tuesday, I'm going to get a different perspective because I'm going to get on a plane and I'm going to fly to Santa Domingo with 10 people from our wonderful church to be with our brothers and sisters at San Jose in Boca Chica in the Dominican Republic. We pray for them every week. And I'm really looking forward to meeting uh, Padre Isaac. He's the new rector there. And I'll see Father Sandino. He's now at the cathedral in Santa Domingo. And I'll certainly see him while I'm there. But we're going down there to do a little painting, to have a free medical clinic, but mostly and most importantly just to be with them and them with us with a different language and a different perspective and certainly a different economic situation down there. They love this church so much they have a print of Old St. Andrews in the church office in the Dominican Republic. It's going to give us a different perspective. I went online yesterday and I was glad because a seat had opened up by the window and I could get a uh, window seat because I, I love watching the ocean and I love, as we come into the Dominican Republic and, and seeing that place that I love so much, probably the 20th time that I'll, that I'll go there will be on Tuesday. It's a different perspective. Zacchaeus, because he climbed up in the tree and he saw things differently. Maybe for the first time. It says he was short in stature. And here's this man, this chief tax collector, whose name, you know, we don't know if it's a nickname that Jesus gave him, like Levi became Matthew, or Simon became Peter. We don't know about Zacchaeus because it means pure. <coughs> But whenever he got that name, whether it was at birth or from his encounter with Jesus, something happened in that perspective and in that invitation that the Lord gave to him. What did some of the people do when Zacchaeus had this encounter with Jesus? Were they really excited for him? What did they do? They grumbled. They grumbled. And we can do the same, and we often do when our perspective just isn't right. Where's Jesus in this encounter? What town is he in? Jericho. Jesus is in Jericho. All right? Now, Jericho, think about that for a minute. Who do you think about? What Bible character do you think about when you hear Jericho? Joshua. Exactly. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho. What chapter are we in in Luke here? We're in chapter 19. Later on in chapter 19 in Luke, Jesus rides into Jerusalem from Jericho on a donkey, Palm Sunday. 
Where did Joshua go? He conquered. He was the conquering hero from Jericho into Israel. The image here of Jesus, he's preparing to go into Jerusalem. And they have expectations and a perspective on the Messiah that he's not going to live up to. And what's it going to get him? The cross. You see, the people here, they don't like Zacchaeus, and they're ultimately not going to like Jesus either. Because Jesus' perspective and what he's about isn't what they want him to be about. And so just like our political leaders, when we don't get our way, cast them out, crucify them, say bad things about them, demonize them. Human nature never changes, does it? Zacchaeus got a different perspective up in that sycamore tree. And here he is, the chief tax collector in a pretty wealthy town. Jericho was rich as a town because it grew, they grew balsam wood around there, which is good for construction. And those of you who are in construction know how important, particularly right now, how important construction material is. It's phenomenally expensive right now. And Zacchaeus got rich. And what does he do from his encounter with Jesus? He gives away. He gives to the poor, like those down in the Dominican Republic. He's changed by this encounter with Jesus. My hope, my challenge for you today, for me, for our church, is to try to see a different perspective. To try to see the world and other people through the eyes of Jesus like Jesus would see Zacchaeus up in that tree. He saw purity in that man. And it changed Zacchaeus' life. It can change yours. It can change mine. It'll change that baby's life. And it'll change our lives, the ten of us who go down there, when we see Jesus through our brothers and sisters down there this week. So... Whatever sycamore tree it is that you need to climb up into, try a different perspective. See other people like Jesus sees you. Jesus, at the conclusion of the Gospel lesson, He says, Today, salvation has come, not just to Zacchaeus, but to His, what does it say there? To His house. Joshua, at the close of his life, gave a message to the people, and he said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. May that always be the case for you, for me, and for this church. As we seek to see the world as our Lord sees it. Amen? Amen. Let's stand and proclaim that faith. Father Almighty. prayers of the people.
let us offer our prayers to God. Lord God, we thank you for the leaders of our church, especially Archbishop Beach, Bishop Edgar, Bishop Skilton, Father Marshall, Father Joe, Father David, Deacon Lee, and our staff, and we ask you to bless them. We also pray for St. Andrew's Mission and their vicar, Father Jimmy Galan. Lord God, we pray for all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others, in particular for Father Zach Nash, chaplain at Joint, at Joint Base Charleston All Saints, All Saints Church in Florence, their rector, Father Jason Hamshaw, Chelsea, and their family. San Jose Church in the Dominican Republic, their rector, Father Isaac Pringle Meja, and their bishop, Moises Quesada. And Father Rob Sturdy at the Anglican Chaplain at the City. Lord God, we pray for the leaders of our country, especially President Biden, Governor McMaster, Mayor Tackenberg, and we ask you to bless them. Lord God, we thank you for all our blessings, especially for people who love and care for us. Thank you, Lord, especially for Father Isaac and the people of San Jose Church. Lord God, we ask you to take care of everyone who is sick or sad. Especially David Eckerd, Terry Perch, Dana Payne, Debbie Causey, Sandy Marchionet, Kay Namor, Mike Filan, and the family and friends of Chester Tideman. Lord God, we know you hear us when we pray. We ask that you answer our prayers as may be best for us. Almighty God, who sits on the throne of judgment, we humbly beseech thee to bless the members of the South Carolina Supreme Court as they deliberate this final petition filed against us, given to them the spirit of wisdom and understanding that they may provide finality to these lawsuits and enable us to continue our mission and ministry here. God, and direct us as to how to best support and serve Camp St. Christopher and the parishes who have been displaced. Grant to all of us in our diocese your peace, which truly passes understanding and the reassurance that you are a just and loving God. Lord, in your mercy, let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Most merciful God, we, we confess. confess. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. Peace.
idea about first communion? Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Old St. Andrews today. A couple of announcements for you today. Um, first of all, an announcement that is not in your uh, Sunday cast net, but that is that uh, Parent Cafe has a new room, a new place to meet. Uh, Parent Cafe has grown so much that it's outgrown Howard's classroom, so it's going to move upstairs. Um, up at the top of the steps, the, the new choir room space is available and a lot bigger. And uh, so Parent Cafe is going to move upstairs. So please make your way uh, after you drop your children off at Sunday school. Uh, go on up the steps and find the choir room. Parent Cafe will be up there today. Out on the pew benches, hopefully, are the forms for All Saints Day. Are those out? Vicki, those are out. Yep. And um, if you would please fill that out, that is next Sunday. So if you would like someone remembered in prayer uh, next Sunday on All Saints Sunday, please fill that out today and place that in the offering plate or just leave it in the back of the church as you leave today. And we will include that in the um, All Saints prayers uh, next Sunday. For those of you uh, watching online, you may email that into the church office or call Amy uh, during uh, regular business hours with your All Saints Remembrance, okay? So that is next Sunday we celebrate All Saints Day. Uh, Children's Choir. Children's Choir is off to a great start. Uh, if you'd like to check that out, it's explained in the Sunday cast net. Uh, they meet this afternoon, and that's just been great so far, and I'm excited about uh, them singing for us in a few weeks. Uh, the Food Drive. Uh, you know, every November we have a food drive to stock the pantry at West Ashley High School. And that is uh, starting off this week. Um, and boxes will be out for Carolina and Citadel and Clemson. And hopefully Carolina will score a few more points than they did last night. So um, we look forward to a great collection. Please remember that this is non-perishables that need to come in uh, to the, the food boxes. And these help to stock the food pantry for students uh, who, uh, who need food over the weekend. Uh, or who may even need it that night. And they can go into the food pantry at West Ashley uh, quietly and without shame and put food in their backpacks and take it home. So it's a great ministry and we uh, restock that food pantry every uh, November. Our uh, women's study starts uh, up this week and uh, uh, Brenda has uh, an explanation about it. It starts on Thursday at 10 o'clock. Um, and I love this opening line here. The average woman speaks over 20,000 words a day. And uh, based on my experience, I would say that we have above average women here at this church. So um, come on Thursday and check this out. This should be a great study. And, uh, and she's looking forward uh, to leading that. Um, Father Joe has an announcement about First Communion class. That is coming up as well. That's today, the First Communion class, right? Right. First Communion is offered to our children once a year. And today, there's one class held at 11 o'clock over there in the Gill Room, which is the room opposite Howard's room. If you haven't signed up yet and would like your child to come to the class, either because they want First Communion or they take communion and haven't gone to the class or they've been to the class before and you want a refresher, then come today at 11 o'clock. Next Sunday at 9 a.m., which is All Saints Sunday, we will hold the First Communion for those children. Great. Thank you, Father Joe. So to everyone now, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and a sacrifice to God. A reminder that this is the Lord's table. All baptized Christians here today, you are welcome to receive Holy Communion at Old St. Andrews. Amen.
yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. All things come from you, O Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels, and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross, and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection and suffering, by his resurrection he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he'd given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ is We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom. We shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy Give us this day our day. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. We do not present the comfort of Jesus. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us. peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Well, that's different. Amen. Our worship has concluded. Our service now begins. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Have a blessed day.